Hello everybody, Faithodas here. Finally we have the new news of uh, April for Titan Quest 2. I haven't taken any looks yet uh, to the news. Uh, uh, we will watch right now exactly what is happening with the new news. And here it says Mythical Beasts. Let's click on this one. Opa, nice. Okay, what is this? Is this... Uh, I don't know what this is. Anyway, mini bosses. In today's update, we give you a glimpse of two of our mini bosses, the Griffin and the Hippocampus. Oh, this is a Griffin. Mythologically, Griffins hail from uh, Scythia, a region in Eastern Europe and Central Asia, where a tribe of them is said to sit atop of a horde of treasure. Like many monsters in Greek mythology, they are a hybrid creature with a lion's body and an eagle's head and wing. When a griffin moves into the neighborhood, there is bound to be trouble, as they are known for picking off sheep, goats, pigs and even wild boars for their uh, supper. A fight with a griffin is a perfect opportunity for a fledgling Greek hero to prove their mettle. But be warned, griffins can be crafty creatures. Okay, this is concept art, it looks nice, but... Ah! Oh, uh, this is... Uh... In combat, the griffin's most powerful ability has, uh, has it uh, take off into the air and utilize a powerful sweeping attack. As an agile creature, it will also be capable of pouncing around the player, lashing out several times in a row where uh, least expected. This then gets routed out by several variants of regular melee attacks. While this is the first and easiest mini boss you will come across... Okay, this is info that it is not necessary. This is a spoiler. Why? Why would you say that this is the first um, boss and also the easiest mini boss that we will come across? It is not necessary to have this info. Let us uh, surprise us when uh, the game is out. Let us find out when the boss comes into play. Uh, we don't need to know when exactly will it, this will happen. We still intend for it to pose a threat to test your combat fundamentals. Hippocampus. Aha. Hippocampi are what the ancient Greeks believed the adult form of the seahorse looked like, and you can see that reflected in their colorful, almost feather light appearance. In the world of Titan Quest 2, they were coveted by the ancient Mycenaeans for their menageries, as mounts to the near age and uh, chariot horses for Poseidon, they can be quite dangerous when provoked. Okay. Um, I don't like the look. It, it looks, uh, I don't know. This looks a bit childish. Maybe too colorful. Uh, maybe... I mean, this looks great. This looks perfect. But it looks, you know, a bit more... Um, more dangerous something. This looks very bright, especially the horse face. I don't know, it, it looks very... I don't like it. Of course, the detail of the graphics is amazing, but... The art style of this one is quite childish. I don't like it. The Hippocampus is somewhat more advanced in combat than the Griffin. Utilizing a mixture of coded lightning damage, it will hit the player with a barrage of powerful attacks such as a telegraphed, telegraphed, but sudden geyser eruption as well as a powerful water jet, followed up by a stunning lightning strike. It will also be able to hurl ice shards at the player and make use of several melee attacks as well as a defensive barrier. What's more, we are experimenting with making this creature completely immune to crowd control effects, uh, stunning, freezing, outside of telegraphed windows of vulnerability. These aspects together will require that the player makes use of all they have learned so far. A good sense of attack timings, movement during combat and evasion will be rewarded. First of all, this creature completely... Uh, making this creature completely immune to crowd control effects like standard freezing. Already in Titan Quest 1, this is a case where boss, you cannot freeze most of the bosses, big bosses, also many of the uh, smaller bosses. You cannot use crowd control effects on the bosses. So this is something that it is not new for the Titan Quest universe. It is already happening in the first game. Is it a good thing? Maybe not. Maybe also in the first game it should be changed a little bit. But anyway, it is what it is. At least it will be faithful to the first Titan Quest if you have on bosses and mini bosses uh, immunity to crowd control effects. Because this is already happening in Titan Quest 1. Outside 
of telegraphed windows of vulnerability telegraphed windows of vulnerability we need to see gameplay to see exactly how this works because maybe it is okay uh, but maybe it is not okay because maybe it makes the game uh, more uh, souls like than titan quest like and if this is the case uh, we are talking about a big failure here these aspects together will require that the player makes use of all they have learned so far a pretty vague uh, sentence a good sense of attack timings movement during combat and evasion will be rewarded okay this in titan quest 1 when you fight bosses for example you have uh, uh, let's talk about madicor let's take madicor as a boss in titan quest 1 all bosses have their own uh, specific attacks, spells, melee attacks and whatever and uh, they use them and many times against many bosses you will have to actually especially for example this is why I'm talking about Madikor because he has that uh, specific attack which he hits you with his legs and if he hits you then um, most of the times you get killed almost instantly because that attack is extremely powerful but there is a way in Titan Quest 1 against Madikor to calculate when Madikor will do this attack and you can avoid it. So, if uh, what they are saying here works like what we have in Titan Quest 1 in cases like Madikor um, uh, movements and attacks and also other bosses, not only Madikor, then everything is fine. That That is good. It is okay. But I'm... Uh, I'm concerned about this telegraphed windows of vulnerability. As far as our vision for these uh, boss encounters goes, steadiest players that learn the moves of these creatures will be best equipped to respond to them. It's all about building a rhythm and achieving a clean execution. Again, uh, if you go to survive in Titan Quest 1 against bosses, especially against bosses, you will need to learn their attacks, especially if you go to play hardcore. Um, you will need to learn their attacks Calculate when they are going to use the big attack. If they have a big attack, they have. And this way you can survive. And then, after you have avoided that big attack of a boss, like Madikor for example, you can attack. So, you calculate that you have, if you have good timing and good evasion uh, skills as a player, to be able to calculate and run away and kite back and do all of these things and then attack at the right times, then uh, you can uh, win the game. Let's put it this way. I hope this is what they mean uh, with all of these sentences here, they don't mean something else. To aid this learning process, these creatures perform clear sequences of attacks, making it so that clean play can result in victory on a first attempt, provided you survive as you are uh, learning the enemy's moves. Mind you, death carries a heavy price in Titan Quest 2. Okay, what? What is the meaning of this? The entire encounter that killed you, whether it is a boss or not, uh -huh, gets fully reset and you will respawn in the previous hub. Conven convenient teleport options will be provided though. These creatures will certainly have the tools to put players down when they are making several mistakes. Even defeats can teach useful lessons, however. Okay, in Titan Quest 1, if you die by a boss, you go, you respond to the latest rebirth fountain that you have activated. And then you have, <laughs> you have to run all the way back to the boss if you want to reach the boss and do the boss fight again. And sometimes the bosses maybe they are a bit far away. But the fully gets fully reset. Whether it's a boss or not, it gets fully reset. Maybe what they mean here is that, for example, again in Titan Quest 1, when you fight a boss, you deal damage, let's say that you are fighting against a boss, you have uh, damaged half of the health bar of the boss and you got killed. You respawn to the latest river fountain, you, you run back to the boss, but the boss is not fully healed now, he has uh, still uh, half the health bar. Because this is uh, what he had when you died. Maybe what they mean here is that always the boss fight begins from zero. The, the boss is uh, totally healed, everything is... Uh, it starts from the beginning. If this is the case, okay, it is okay, it is not a bad thing. But I hope, because it says whether it is a boss or not, gets fully reset. I hope that this doesn't mean that the enemies in the world, all enemies you have killed until you reach the boss, 
They respawn after you die. And you respawn in uh, whatever uh, teleport options you have there. You respawn there, but I hope that they do not respawn at the same time. Because uh, this is not a good thing. It is not... It is not really Titan Quest gameplay. It goes to Souls, Dark Souls, because in all Souls-like games, when you die, everything responds. And you have to go through everything again. This is annoying for a Titan Qu for a game like uh, Titan Quest, which is supposed to be a hack and slash action RPG. It is not uh, because action RPG uh, is a wide open term. Skyrim is an action RPG, but it is first person or third person. Uh, Assassin's Creed games, Origins, Valhalla, Odyssey are action RPG games. Then you have Stoker is an action RPG game, but it is first person shooter action RPG. There are many action RPG, you know, different styles of RPGs. But Titan Quest belongs to that one that was made by Diablo. That this is hack and slash action RPG loot based games. It is not Dark Souls like. With Souls like games, you go somewhere else. And if we get Fully reset of everything after you have died by the boss until you reach the boss. Then we are talking about Souls-like features, which is very bad. I don't go to see it in this game. Uh, I will be heavily disappointed if this will be in this game. Uh, you can also always choose to work on getting a little stronger before returning for your next attempt. You can level up beyond the current area's level. Yeah, okay. Um... Or simply farm for items that help against the specific boss equations such as via resistances. Yeah. Uh, this is good because this reminds me of Titan Quest 1. On the other hand, if you are looking for even more of a challenge, you can raise the difficulty by invoking rituals. Yeah, okay. Uh, we don't know what these rituals are. We don't know anything about the difficulty of the game, how it works. So this is a little bit uh, not useful info. It is not useless, but it is not really useful because we don't understand how the game works yet. We have it in the game. But this one you can level up beyond the current area's level. It reminds me a little bit of um, Remnant from the Ashes, which is again an action RPG game, third person, Souls-like though. And in that game, uh, you go, you know, as every in every Souls-like game, it is very challenging. You go to the boss. If you die, then. Uh, in that game specifically, you can uh, sit back in the areas before the boss. You can farm those areas, level up and make the boss fight easier and go to the boss. Now, the current area, uh, area's level, we don't know how this works, so we don't really understand again here exactly what they mean. But this, it reminded me again of a Souls-like game. I don't know. I'm getting a bit disappointed here. But the in-game graphics look amazing though. Okay, this one, the Epoca boss, looks better here in-game. In the game, because this is an in-game screenshot. Here it looks better. Here it looks quite childish, but here it looks better. Lastly, these fights are not one-off experiences, as you will be able to resummon these beasts in order to reap the rewards again and again. We will talk about these rewards in more detail soon. Rate up. Okay, so overall, once again, they prove that they are making great job with uh, visuals. The game already looks amazing. Of course, we haven't seen any animations, in-game animations, so we don't know. But I guess that animations will be very good at least. We have these two enemies. This looks great. Uh, this looks a bit childish, but here it looks better. So here it looks much better actually. Overall we got some info here about uh, the combat of the game. But to actually know how the game uh, plays the combat, we need to see some uh, a video or something. Or even better, give it a try. Maybe they, if they could, maybe they should release a 5 minute demo. 5 minutes only. Or 3 minutes demo, just a... One enemy, one character to showcase the combat style as a, a demo. Somewhere on Steam, I don't know. So that we could actually test uh, the combat and see exactly what it is. Because we cannot really understand. Uh... But there are a couple of things here that disappoint me because they remind me of Souls-like games. And I hope that this game really... I really hope that it will not be Souls-like. 
it will be Titan Quest. Like. So this is it for these uh, news, guys. This is the April uh, news. I guess I don't know, but I guess that uh, we will be getting uh, this type of news uh, every month from here on, probably. I don't know. Um, so yeah, we will have to wait probably one more month to see what uh, they will show us next month in the next update. But yeah, overall the game looks great. But does it play great? Who knows? Nobody knows. I don't know. I would like to know. Anyway, this is it for this video. Uh, thanks for uh, watching the video, guys. Uh, if you like the video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you got Titan Quest coded. Um, I'm making now a new guide like uh, for beginners leveling up uh, live stream set videos. I will make as many as possible of those. And uh, we have plenty of guides for Titan Quest and uh, gameplay videos. So, if you are into Titan Quest and you haven't subscribed yet, uh, subscribe and watch the code, thousands of uh, Titan Quest videos. And I will see you very soon again uh, with live streams and more videos. So, have a great one. Very nice graphic.